Hey guys, this is kind of a first for us. I wanna kinda of go back a little bit and talk about a movie we reviewed in the past. Not really to update what we have to say about that or to change our perspective on it, but with new information and having gone out and read the source material that it was based on, I wanna kind of explore the idea of how a writer can really take information, take a concept, and expand on it, both in good ways and bad ways. So if you still haven't seen the movie Burning, this is probably gonna be something that's, while not spoiler heavy, I would see the movie before you watch this. Uh, in the meantime, if you're not sure if you wanna watch it, I mean, you could, you could go check out our original review on it. That'd be kinda cool. I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Maybe leave a comment. Tell me I'm great. It's up to you. I don't, don't know what to say. Like. So after seeing Burning, which as you all know, I, I very, very much enjoyed. I, I can't recommend it enough. I actually went out and I got the book of short stories that it's based on by Haruki Murakami. It's called The Elephant Vanishes, and if you have a chance and you can find it, and it's in a city near you, I mean, it's a bookstore, it's probably pretty easy to find. Also, there's a new thing I've heard about called Amazon, which is a small thing, but if you get it on the ground floor, I think it's gonna be pretty big. I think what I, what I found really rewarding about reading through that book is when you read a lot of novels by the same author, you begin to pick up on kind of their tics and their habits and how they write characters, if they have certain idiosyncrasies they write in, and certain themes. And it's a really good collection of short stories that, you know, some are three or four pages long and some like barn burning are 20 to 30 pages. And that gives you kind of the same experience, the same familiarity with that author as reading several of their novels would, except in this it's obviously more condensed. And what's interesting about that as somebody thinking about a script or writing a movie is imagining uh, if somebody says to you, we want to make a movie out of this short story and you were to go read Barn Burning and it's 20 to 30 pages, you know, you now have the task of really expanding that out into 90 minutes, two hours. I know Burning is a longer film. And so that's a pretty daunting challenge and a pretty daunting task. And some people will collaborate with the original author some people will go out and just write the script on their own. In the case of Burning, the script was written by the director and another writer. And when you do that, it's interesting that you have to transform that material and really make it your own. And I think it's easier to an extent for that director because you're kind of off in your own world creating the aesthetic, the visual, how you want the characters to be acted. You're putting in a little bit more of yourself. And so what I really want to do is explore some of the differences, what works about it, and why sometimes an adaptation completely goes to shit. First and foremost, what I think really helps a writer is the fact that when you're taking a short story, you really are adapting it, but also creating something completely new. You're adding so much more to it in terms of content. And when you do that, it really is kind of like taking you know, a premise or an idea, which is very common with a script, is you know, you'll have the beginning and the ending maybe, or you'll have 20 or 30 pages kind of outlined in your head, and you're building from that. And when you're doing that, you're really having a foundation and you're growing something continuously. It's something that I think is easier for a writer in some circumstances to work with. And that's mainly because you're gonna have that continuity from beginning to end. I think sometimes when you've got a longer book, like God forbid, like a Harry Potter, or something of that nature, you really have to condense down 800 pages into two hours. And there are probably so many little details strewn about those 700 pages that you need to incorporate them because otherwise certain plot devices won't make sense. You know, you're not gonna have a certain wand or cloak or whatever the fuck. And you know, you need to find ways to work those things in. And sometimes that could mean that you'll have way too many scenes that aren't very long and it feels like it's kind of all over the place. Sometimes you're gonna have to leave out interesting scenes and dialogue. Everybody's gonna have a complaint. Everybody's gonna have an issue. So I think that's pretty difficult to do. You've really got to pick and choose, you know, what are the greatest hits of this book and what makes it consumable to an audience that loves the book and that's never even heard of the book. You don't really have those issues with a short story. Now, barn burning versus burning, what are the big differences here? Well, for one thing I would say in the short story barn burning, your protagonist isn't really a character. Your protagonist is really um, just a set of eyeballs through which you perceive the world. He'll talk a lot about this girl that he's met and this man she's fallen in love with and he'll talk about how he perceives interactions. He'll talk about actions that he's taken. It's very descriptive. It's very like reading a journal to an extent. 
And while effective and I think evocative of some of the concepts that uh, Haruki Murakami was really trying to express in the story, it, especially having read it after watching the movie, definitely makes you feel like that main character is more of a side concept. And the main character in the movie is more profound in several ways. One, and probably the biggest tweak, is that your protagonist now not only has more individuality and autonomy, but isn't married now, is closer in age to the woman that he's sort of fallen for. And that's the big key, right? Is that in this case, there's a reason why this character is always with this woman, or the reason that this character is always thinking about this woman. And that thought, that pseudo-obsession, not only makes that character more interesting, but gives that female character more chances to be explored. And by the end of the film, explains why that character is willing to go to the lengths that he does to figure out what's really going on with this man she's fallen in love with. And the key to good writing is that conflict is the salt and pepper for characters. It just brings out all those flavors. It helps those characters really stand on their own. Without conflict, you have to use exposition. You have to really find a way to force that character forward and to progress. And conflict is just it can be dramatic or it can be subtle, but it is a way to express who characters are. In the movie Whiplash, which we just rewatched actually, there's a wonderful scene that really serves no purpose other than to get uh, Andrew, played by Miles Teller, and his dad, played by Paul Reiser, into a theater together. And nobody cares what movie they're watching, nobody really wants to hear exposition about their relationship, but in that sequence, Miles Teller is pouring raisinets into the popcorn for his dad, and it's kind of like a family tradition that they've done. And Paul Reiser realizes that Miles Teller's not eating the raisinettes. And he goes, well, why'd you put him in there? And Miles Teller says, well, I can just pick around them. And you can just tell visually it fucking blows Paul Reiser's mind. And that little moment, that little separation between those two characters, that small form of conflict, shows you that, yeah, Miles Teller's a person who will get what he wants and he'll kind of sacrifice whatever. He'll put the raisinettes in the popcorn. And Paul Reiser... He doesn't understand what the fuck he'd do if someone put raisinets in the popcorn of his life. I don't know if that made sense. I think you know what I'm saying here. In Burning, by having your two main characters actually have a sexual and romantic attraction, it really gives you a reason to get behind this character and his obsession for this woman. It gives you a reason to feel tension when you're not quite sure if the man she's in love with is a, uh, an arsonist who burns down Barnes. And something that's consistent in all of Murakami's short stories is that every story, to a significant degree, involves a character who's having some sort of existential crisis, some sort of observation about the world around them, whether it's about where they are in life in a midlife crisis, or it's about someone who realizes their life is devoid of uh, tension and drama, and this peaking when she learns that her boyfriend used to knock over uh, stores and banks. Or actually, no, it's a bakery. You know, whether it's a woman who can no longer sleep and feels that this has made her a superhuman. You know, every character is having these breakthrough moments, these breakthrough observations, and being propelled forward. And interestingly enough, in Barn Burning, the fascinating element of that story really boils down to the conversation where your protagonist and your antagonist, I wouldn't even say in the story he can be called an antagonist, are just discussing the revelation that the latter burns down barns, and how to him it's as natural as breathing, and that it's an ethical thing he does, and that there's a certain morality he has internal to him. And while that dialogue is in the film, the film is able to explore those concepts on such a grand scale that is internalized to the main character, and internalized all of the characters as they are sent kind of wandering the world to an extent without aim and purpose, with the exception of this potentially evil antagonist. That makes a lot of those ideas more resonant. And what does that mean? Well, to me, that means that it captures the concepts, the core ideas of that short story, and expands it upon them. And that's why, even though I think I prefer the movie to the short story, they're fascinatingly complementary. And I guess the point of this video is there are movies out there that have interesting and fascinating details really buried within them. And had I not seen kind of the skeleton, had I not seen the original composition of Barn Burning in this book of short stories, I think some of the concepts in the movie, or some of the small details in the movie, would have gone completely over my head. And it's an interesting opportunity to look at these two disparate and yet so similar pieces of work and really see what they were trying to say. 
how the absence of a mother affects one character, how the type of clothing uh, affects another, and how offering explicit resolution at the end of a work can sometimes be more impactful than tense and foreboding ambiguity. So in a weird way, this is my first dual recommendation. If you can, The Elephant Vanishes by Haruki Murakami is a wonderful book of short stories, and Lee Chang Dong's Burning is one of the greatest movies of 2018. I can't wait to go back and watch it again. Like I said, I feel like I've learned a lot about it since then through that short story. And in the future, if you guys like this, I may actually do a few more comparisons of books to movies, video games to movies, comics to movies, whatever, and really kind of getting deeper into what makes a good adaptation. Because film is such an interesting and multimedia format that allows us to combine so many concepts, visuals, sounds, you know, human emotion. And gosh, I'll have a lot of time to be reading and watching movies over the next week and a half since this is probably going up on Friday. So I will be getting ready to board my third flight of the week and uh, probably miserable and freezing in Washington, D.C. en route to Charleston. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll be back soon. I'll be posting more videos throughout the next week or so, probably another travel log and a few reviews along the way. So uh, yeah, hope you guys are having a better week than us because this week kind of blows.